Hello learners and welcome back to Constant Learners. In today's video, we are discussing support vector machine. A uh, support vector machine is a kind of supervised machine learning algorithm. In the previous video, we have discussed logistic regression and logistic regression was also a type of supervised machine learning algorithm that was used to solve classification problems. Okay. Now, support vector machine can be used to solve both classification as well as regression problems. But today in this video, we are discussing support vector machine for classification. Okay. Now, support vector machine is a supervised machine learning algorithm. That means we use labeled training data to generate the models. Okay. Along with label training data, some algorithms are used to create the models. Okay. And new data is given to these models. And then these models can classify the data into proper respective categories. All right. Now, let's understand what is support vector machine. See, support vector machine can classify the data in an n-dimensional space. Now, what does this n represent? N represents the number of attributes of data. What is the meaning of attributes? Attributes means features or characteristics of data. Okay. Like the data can have age, it can have weight, it can have height, then color. There can be multiple characteristics. Okay. So support vector machine can classify the data that has multiple characteristics. Now we know that in case of logistic regression, we were classifying the data using probabilities, correct? On y-axis, we had probabilities, all right? We had two classes, 0 and 1. We had to classify the data between 0 and 1. And we used 0 0.5 as the decision threshold. The probability values below 0 0.5 were considered as class 0. And the probability values above 0 0.5 are considered as class 1. Okay. Now, in case of support vector machine also, we are trying to find the decision threshold. Or we can say a decision boundary that is known as the hyperplane. Okay. So, in case of SVM, we are trying to find out the most optimal hyperplane. All right. The most optimal hyperplane. Let's understand what is a hyperplane. And what is the most optimal hyperplane? Okay. Now see, we all must have seen or played the game of tug of war. I'm sure you all must have seen it. And hopefully you know what is the game of tug of war. There are two teams. Let's say team A and team B. Okay. And uh, some people are standing on this side of the rope. And some are standing on this side of the rope. This is a rope suppose. And but both the teams have to pull the rope towards their side. Correct? And what decides the uh, winning of any one team? A boundary. Right? But where exactly should this boundary be placed? Can it be placed closer to any team? Can we place the boundary here? No. That will be cheating. Team A will be able to lose very quickly. If they step one step forward, they will lose. Correct? Can this boundary be placed here? No. It should be placed exactly in the center. Right? So when the boundary is in the center, only then it is going to be a fair play. Okay? Now, support vector machine is uh, something like the game of tug of war. Not exactly, but something. Let's understand. Suppose here we have two classes, class A and class B. And these are the data points. Okay? These data points are classified in the class of A and class of B. All of these are data points. Okay. Now, here we are using training data set because we know that it is supervised machine learning. Correct? So, supervised machine learning requires some label training data. So, here we have, uh, we are using the training data set. Okay. Now, see, here we can see that this data point is very close to the team B data point that is belonging to team A but it is closest to team B and this data point belonging to team B is closest to 
team A. Correct? So these two data points that are closest to the opposite team are known as the support vectors. And hence we have the name support vector machine because here the support vectors help us to identify the most optimal hyperplane. Okay? So that is why we have the name support vector machine. Support vectors play an important role in support vector machine because as we have discussed support vector machine is used to identify the most optimal hyperplane and support vectors play a major role in identifying the most optimal hyperplane. Alright, now the hyperplane, as we said that the boundary in the game of tug of war must be placed exactly in the center, correct? So here also we place our boundary or we can say our uh, decision threshold exactly in between the two support vectors belonging to the two classes, okay? So we are going to place the boundary exactly in between these two support vectors so that the margin between this support vector and the decision boundary and the margin between this support vector and the decision boundary is equal. Okay, both of these margins must be equal. Let's call this distance as M1 and this distance as M2. So, M1 should be equal to M2. Okay? So, this is our decision threshold. We can call this as a hyperplane. In this case, it is not a hyperplane. But, right now, we are just considering one dimensional data. And we said that SVM can work uh, with N dimensional data. Correct? So, in case of multiple dimensions of data, we are going to get the hyperplane. In this case, we are just understanding with the help of one dimensional data for now. Okay, so this is our hyperplane. Now, if I draw a line passing through this support vector parallel to the hyperplane. Okay, that means like this. So this line is parallel to the hyperplane and it is closer to this support vector. And if I draw another line passing through this support vector parallel to the hyperplane like this. This is known as the marginal planes. Okay. These are the marginal planes. This one and this one. These are the marginal planes. Alright. This hyperplane is nothing but the support vector classifier because it is helping us to classify the data into two categories that is A and B. And hence it is known as the support vector classifier. Okay. Hyperplane is nothing but the support vector classifier because it is helping us to classify the data. And we have already discussed margin is the distance between hyperplane and the closest data point that is the support vector and margins must be equal. This M1 and M2 distance must be equal. Alright, now let's understand support vector machines in multi-dimensional data set. Okay, now see here... As we have already discussed, this is one dimensional data set, right? In this case, the hyperplane or the decision boundary is going to be a point. Or we can say the support vector classifier is a point in this case, okay? And these are the support vector. This is a support vector and this is also a support vector because it is closest to the opposite team. See, support vectors are the data points that are closest to the opposite class or the opposite team. And this is a support vector because this is closest to the opposite class or opposite team. This is very important to understand this uh, in case of two-dimensional data set. Correct? See, here I have a data set and this is another class. Th these are the two classes, right? This is class A and class B. See, here in this case, I have drawn the hyperplane here. Okay? This hyperplane is exactly in between these two classes. See, if I draw the line perpendicular like this. And from here also if I draw a line perpendicular to the hyperplane. Then this distance is going to be equal to this distance. That is M1 is going to be equal to M2. Because here this is our margin. 
and this is also our margin this is our hyperplane or we can say the support vector classifier and this data point is our support vector because it is lying closest to the opposite class and in this case this is our support vector because it is lying closest to the opposite class all right so here in this case our hyperplane is this and if we draw the marginal planes passing through the support vectors in parallel to the hyperplane we get our margins okay this is our first margin this is the second margin all right so we can say that in two dimensional data set here this is x axis and y axis so this is our two dimensional data set support vector classifier or our hyperplane is a line okay so two dimensional data set can be classified using a line okay so we can call it as linearly classifiable data and the svm that will be used to classify linearly classifiable data is known as linear support vector machine all right i hope that this much was clear now in case of three dimensional data set this is x y and z suppose this is three dimensional data set now here we have these data sets we cannot classify these using a straight line there is no straight line that can be used to classify this data correct so what are we going to do we are going to use a two dimensional plane for this okay so here in this case our hyperplane or our support vector classifier is a two dimensional plane correct so in case of three dimensional data set we can say that our support vector classifier or our hyperplane is a plane two dimensional plane okay i hope that this much was clear all right for two dimensional data set our support vector classifier was a one dimensional line for a three dimensional data set our support vector was a two dimensional plane all right i hope that this much was clear now here we can draw a three dimensional plane but drawing a four dimensional plane and hyperplane for that is not feasible that is not possible okay but machines are trained in a way wherein they can handle multi dimensional data as well as classify them okay using support vector machine so we are going to skip that in this video for now but we are going to see how uh, support vector machines can classify multi dimensional data okay or we can say non linear data now let's see what is linear data see i have already discussed when the two data sets can be classified using a straight line as a hyperplane here the hyperplane is a line then we call it linearly separable data okay and the support vector machine is known as linear support vector machine correct now in this case the data is not linearly separable we cannot draw a straight line to classify this kind of data correct so this is non linearly separable data correct here also in this case this is not linearly separable data we cannot draw a straight line to separate this data so this is also non linearly separable data and the non linearly separable data can be separated using non linear svm we are going to see how non linearly separable data is separated using the svm uh, but that we are going to discuss in the next video we use kernel functions okay for non linear data we use kernel functions to separate the data sets okay but before we end this video let's understand what is the most optimal hyperplane and how we can choose the most optimal hyperplane now in this case we have two data sets a and b okay and this is a similar data set a and b here the only difference is the angle at which we are drawing the hyperplane here this green one is the hyperplane and here this is also a hyperplane okay so when the hyperplane is at an angle this data point acts as the support vector we have drawn a line passing through this support vector and parallel to the hyperplane so this is our marginal plane here this data point acts as the support vector because it is closest to the opposite class and so this is also our marginal plane okay 
and here we get the margins this is m1 and this is m2 correct and let's call this total distance this total margin to be capital m1 okay in this uh, classification here the hyperplane is at a different angle correct and when we draw uh, the marginal planes passing through the support vector here this is the support vector and this is the support vector we've drawn the marginal planes passing through the support vectors and parallel to the hyperplane correct now in this case suppose this distance is this margin is m3 and this margin is m4 and this complete distance or complete margin let's call it capital m2 now if m1 is greater than m2 then we say that in this case we have the most optimal hyperplane okay so if the margin the total cushion or the total distance between the two classes is more then we get the most optimal hyperplane and we are going to choose the hyperplane wherein the margin is the maximum or the distance is the maximum all right so we are uh, more inclined towards selecting this uh, support vector machine or this classification because it gives us more space for uh, classifying the data or the more space between the two classes all right and we have to understand one thing that support vector machine is not perfect no algorithm is perfect and even support vector machines can have some outliers that means some data points that are wrongly classified okay and miscalculations to some extent is allowed in support vector machine we're going to discuss nonlinear data sets in the next video stay tuned if you have any questions any queries please write them down in the comment section below and thank you so much for watching.